The Nature of Personal Reality, a Seth book by Jane Roberts, read by Martin John. Session 655, April 11, 1973, 9.36 p.m. Wednesday. Good evening. Dictation. Your neuronal activity structures your conscious experience, then. The overall rhythms of your creaturehood automatically bring you into periods of rest and intense focus. The night and day constitute a framework within which your experience is couched, providing the conscious mind with needed stimuli and relaxation and allowing for proper assimilation of events. As mentioned, even the body construction has built-in mechanisms to alter such an arrangement when further data can be handled. As a rule, you have enough difficulty dealing with the day's occurrences, much less next week's. And so, in the sequence of events, the reality of probable actions is usually hidden from your view. This more complex reality is an ever-existing property of your personal creaturehood. Besides this, in your terms you exist as a creature more than once. In each of your reincarnational existences, you are faced with the same relationship with probabilities. In each case, also, the nature of the conscious mind sets up its own territory of identity that it regards as its own. This provides a clear focus in which present actions can be considered. These incarnations are all simultaneous. A death is but one night to the soul. The vaster entity of which you are part follows your progress as easily as you follow your own through the days. As a rule, most of you wake up in the same bed in the same house or town, but certainly you wake up as the same person in the same century. In those terms, the entity wakes up as a different person each day in a different century, each life seeming like a day in its level of experience. It carries the memory and simultaneous experience of each of those selves. A form is basically non-physical. What you see of form is only that part that can be effectively active or materialized within your system of reality. So the entity in its own way possesses what you can think of as future neuronal structures. Within that vast form is your own, which is briefer, yet is not lost, not limited, and not predetermined. You form your corner of the universe, which is itself a part of another one. Within this, the actions and beliefs of one affect all. Each part is vital, and in one way or another, there is an instant communication between the smallest and the largest, the cobweb and the spider, the man, the entity, and the star. And each spins its own web of probabilities from which other universes continually spring. Which you? Which world? All of this may seem to have little to do with your daily personal experience, and yet it is intimately connected. For personally and in mass, you can indeed create the best of possible worlds. The performance of a great athlete gives evidence of the abilities inherent in the human form that are little used. Great artists, by their very works, demonstrate other attributes latent in the race as a whole. They still represent one-line delineations, however. Within the experience of your race as you know it lie all the patterns that would point to some fully developed human being. 
in which all inherent tendencies were given full play and come to fruition. You would have an individual who displayed within himself or herself all of those great abilities known to the race, fulfilled according to his own unique temper, the artist, mathematician, athlete, the inventor, all the extraordinary qualities of creaturedom, the emotional realities would be used to their capacity, and any of the racial qualities or characteristics of the species would be given their complete freedom. Wisdom and foolishness would seem as aspects, one of the other. Religion and science would each be unhampered by dogma in such an individual. In the same way, following your own trace experiences of characteristics, you can discover those probable abilities that are yours and uncover to some degree the nature of probable actions open to you for physical materialization. There are traces in your present experience of your probable selves even as there are signs in each individual of all the great talents shown and developed so flamboyantly by a few. These traces can be brought into your experience to enrich it. They do so in any case on unconscious levels, where they form the basis from which you choose your current experience. The next brief chapter will be devoted to methods that will allow you to take advantage of greater options, to bring into your daily experience events and experiences that have so far remained latent. In each individual case, the options will be different, of course, yet you can draw into your present life some knowledge and intimate connection with your own probable realities. On a conscious basis, then, you can learn to deepen the dimensions of your life by putting into it the rich fabric of probabilities. Period. End of chapter and break. Peace, light, and love. Aloha.